So we go into extreme communities and look at how we can actually use sport as a medicine to drive change in uh, for the children of today, but also uh, for the future of that community to change their whole fabric, give them a bit of blue sky and actually uh, realistically give them a leadership model that will actually move them out of the space they're in. Well, this is our first year of running Leckenfield Wines McLaren Vale Marathon. So we're really planting an acorn. We've got just over 800 runners signed up at the moment. They're looking to engage with the local community, the local business community, and just add that vibrancy to the area. This is Legends with Bevo. Thanks to Anytime Fitness Glenelg, Renelec Electrical Services, Tiger Tennis, and SMS Gas Installations. This episode of Legends with Bevo is proudly sponsored by Kookaburra Homes. Kookaburra Homes have been awarded South Australia's most professional home builder two years in a row. They're a true SA success story and are passionate about other South Australians sharing their success stories. Well, what a special privilege it is today on Legends with Bevo to be joined by Matt Evans and also Roger Rashid. Matt is the founder of Great Southern Runs. Did I pronounce that correctly, Matt? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, beautiful. And also a big part of the Lincolnfield Wines McLaren Vale Marathon, which we're going to get to in a moment. And Roger, great to have you on the show today. <laughs> now, obviously, the Roger Rashid Sports Foundation is a major sponsor for this year's event, Rog. And so we'll get to you in terms of uh, how your, your foundation's involved in that in a moment. No problems. But, but Matt, um, tell us more about the event happening on the 10th and the 11th of April. It's not just a marathon. There's lots of great stuff happening. Tell us more about it. That's right. It's primarily a running event, but we've got a lot more happening around the, the runs over the weekend. Um, we've got runs on Saturday and Sunday, um, but also at the at the winery, we've got our markets all weekend, just uh, with some sporting goods and health and well-being stalls and also showcasing a lot of local produce and arts and crafts. Uh, we've got a, a kid zone, so on Saturday afternoon we'll have a petting zoom, so it'll be a nice family-friendly event. And then in, after the runs are finished on Saturday, we go into an outdoor cinema. We've got a kids' movie, Wallace and Gromit, followed by our Forrest Gump for the general viewers. Wow, that's all happening, mate. So. Uh, and then <laughs> Sunday afternoon, after all the running's been been done, everyone can kick back on the lawns. We'll have some presentations and a couple of local musicians, and everyone can enjoy that glass of wine they deserve. That sounds absolutely terrific, Matty. Uh, how can people get involved? Is there a Facebook page and stuff that people can just jump on to find out more about it? Yeah, absolutely. Just search for Leckenfield Wines McLaren Vale Marathon or visit greatsouthernruns.com and there's still plenty of time to sign up. Yeah, it's going to be an awesome event and we'll get to it, obviously how it's going to be such a big part of the Fleuro Peninsula and bringing back tourism to the Fleuro Peninsula. We'll get to that in a moment. But Roger, obviously the Roger Rashid Sports Foundation is doing wonderful things in terms of uh, helping out the community and great stuff around South Australia, which we all need after the COVID year we've had. Um, tell us more about your foundation and their involvement in this year's event. Yeah, well, I'm not running. That's that's the first thing. So, uh, <laughs> so let's just put that on the table. Uh, I know there's different different uh, areas, the half marathon the, and there's smaller events, but um, I think I'll just enjoy the festivities. Look, um, I have a board member, Kate Abraham, who, who's a who's a fond runner. She's organised our groups to go to the New York Marathon. So we've had some big groups attend there, which is an, an outstanding experience. And this also, in your own backyard, is a great experience. It's just a festival um, uh, where you can actually take the whole family. So for us to be um, attached to it, and supporting it, I think, is is excellent. So what Matt's doing is, you know, he's stepping out of his, you know, you got to step out of your comfort zone to to create one of these and actually take some risks. And and Matt's done that, and it's a in a, it's a beautiful part of South Australia, obviously. And uh, for us to jump on board, we're we're down south at the moment um, with a big development at Christie's Downs. So uh, you know, it's close to our hearts that that's that region of South Australia right now. And um, and so for my foundation to be there, we have some runners that are running in it. They'll generate a little bit of uh, they'll generate some funds that will go. Uh, back towards our programs and uh, yeah so we're, we're pretty we're, you know we're, we're soaked to be around and uh, as I said I'll be there I don't know I'll be throwing water at people or doing something <laughs> well, whatever, whatever whatever it needs I'll, I'll, I'll be there and a bit of history about uh, about the Roger Rashid Foundation because it's obviously a, a really important thing that you've got there got there happening and yeah tell us how it all came about yeah look it's just the bottom line is um, I wanted to you know to being being uh, coaching globally and actually being at the very pointy end of a, of a world sport, you know, there's, that's obviously you get a lot of uh, privileges attached to that. And so, um, but you never take that for granted. And, and you also got to look at the other end of the spectrum where there's a lot of kids that never touch sport, I mean, never get the opportunities to to actually follow a pathway that can give them a lot of great life lessons. And so, so my, you know, 
and I'm very passionate about that. I came from, you know, my parents came from um, from a country from Lebanon where there was a lot of, uh, you know, it was torn apart, and so there was a lot of, you know, there's there's a lot of areas where people are struggling, and, and I've had a lot of family. I've got a lot of family over there that have done done it very hard as well, so extremely hard. So, to give opportunities, I think, is a privilege. Um, you know, you're you're lucky to be able to do that, and, and I think, and I, but when I say a privilege, it, it should be something that we do look out to do is give give people opportunities and uh, if you can start with the youth they then give you a, a world of excitement I think because that's all they want they just want an opportunity so we go into extreme communities and look at how we can actually use sport as a medicine to drive change in uh, for the children of today but also uh, for the future of that community to change their whole fabric give them a bit of blue sky and actually uh, realistically give them a leadership model that will actually move them out of the space they're in and generally they'll you know we're we're putting our arms around them and actually and saying come with us for the ride what a wonderful idea that's um so the roger rashid sports foundation if people want to get involved and support this really good um charity they just jump on there's a website for, yeah so they stuff? yeah they can go to roger rashid sports foundation uh, .com .au and um you know and they can put their yearly wages into, into that that's, that's okay <laughs> <laughs> no honestly it's, <laughs> it's, it's doing great things and it's really really awesome that you're a part of, of this what's going to be a fantastic event on 10th and 11th of april and lincolnfield wines what an awesome sponsor to have as a major sponsor as well i remember a couple of years ago watching farnsey at lake and field once what a great venue that is and mm. how'd you end up getting them involved maddie well it was quite an obvious choice really looking at the beautiful grounds they've got there and such an expansive space it was it was quite an easy choice they've got definitely room having like you said down the green down there a couple of couple of times and also a lot of space for car parking they're just on the edge of mclaren vale so we're not going into the town and interrupting disrupting local local business too much during the day but when we approached them, the the team there were really really supportive and really engaged with it. They they definitely saw the value in getting people outdoors, getting people being healthy and active, um, and also they like a lot of the family friendly aspects of the event. So it's not wine wine and tourism isn't just for the to the hardcore drinkers. You know, it's it's about coming out and and enjoying the the area and other things going on. And Roger, you touched on it before, the Christie's Downs facility that you're looking to uh, be a part of raising money for. Um, what's involved there? Tell us more about that. Uh, look, it's a, it's a bit of a blank canvas. It's 37,000 square metres of land. So I went, approached the, Chris, uh, the city of Onkaparinga Council and, and trying to find a space which uh, might work for our, to drop our IP in and, and drop our platform in. And so we came up with this facility. And it's, um, so we're now, stage one has been completed. It's taken a couple of years to get to the first um, opportunity to stick a shovel in and actually turn some soil. So three and a half million dollar uh, development it is, and it will have a. Uh, it's got an existing community centre on it, but then there's just land, and um, and so they do a great job there. What we're doing to that is transforming the whole thing. So we we have now a skate park which we've just taken the fences off. It's not. It's the skate park's ready, but uh, we've still got that's stage one of the facility. So we had to sort of, uh, so they were a group called Convict and they, they build the best skate parks in Australia and they're world renowned and, and they've just built, we've just, we lifted the fence off that last week and it's probably, it's, they said it's their best skate park they've ever built in the country. <laughs> um, it's, we, I gave them some, I needed them to give a lot of wow collaborate so it joined into the the climate of the ocean as well and the and the and the sea so they actually they actually brought a lot of that into the facility as well it's got what it does so we want to have a national championships there we're looking at that at the moment and so that's stage one we're also in the middle of building four tennis courts there'll be a junior oval um that'll be multi-purpose courts there'll be um nature play kindergartens there more community stuff will go through the community center for kids they'll come and get fed um, after school and then we'll put uh, programs in there three days a week where they'll get free coaching on on the site uh, at large with with programs from skating to whatever whatever the sports are going to be so they generally are going to be this space is going to be activated for the whole community but more so for the children first and the community come and uh, engage it so yeah it's a massive project which will probably be open around September uh, fully. We'll do our full opening around September. So, um, but you can go and enjoy the skate park, which already there are hundreds of people. Last weekend there were hundreds down there coming from around all around South Australia because the word got out that the fences were down, and so they were 
all the the best skaters and you know and the, the people on bikes and so it was, it was quite amazing i was getting oh. pictures from people saying you wouldn't believe the crowd that's awesome so, yeah so, so it's already doing it's it's already serving a purpose um yeah so we're we're really excited about that the city of Ongpringa, the council state government who are, who are partners as well and officer and sports so that they've all jumped on board with it as well and so um and then you know as i said it's going to change for, for about 100 and 100 to 120 dollars a year that allows one child to do full uh, a full year sports program. Oh, gee whiz! Not a bad, not yeah. a bad, not a bad program, is it? So, and, and obviously, um, it's so important now to get kids off their screens and get them out. You know, because when we were kids, I, it was just one of the best parts about being a kid was was going out and playing and meeting new friends and mm-hmm. being out there exercising, wasn't well, it? And yeah, it's more than sport. So we just use it as medicine, really. So just yeah. the engagement, the ability to engage, the you know, the interaction, how to problem solve, how to how to you know, to to just everything to actually feel like someone cares. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the mental the mental health. Uh, you know, so the the health risks that are, that are with kids in these extreme areas is enormous. It outweighs everything else. Um, so that changes dramatically. So there's a whole, we also having, we've just advertised now nationally for it, there'll be a PhD uh, student that will actually do, that will deliver a PhD for the Roger Ashley Sports Foundation. We'll have an index that will attach to this whole site um, on the site and externally as well. And the site will be fully smart activated as well. So, so it's a pretty cool facility. Yeah. That is wonderful. It's can't wait to, yeah, well, can't wait till September to see it up and running, Rog. Yeah. Great stuff with that. Thanks. And speaking of important things that are happening in the region, Matt, we spoke about this off air as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, the last 12 months, we, no one, we need to, no one needs to talk about how tough it's been for everyone, but, um, obviously it's really important giving back to the regions and, and the Fluro Peninsula as well is such a great region. And talk to us about this being such a significant event and also bringing back more significant events to the region why well, that's so important that's right well this is our first year of running the um uh leckenfield wines mclaren vale marathon um so we're really planting an acorn we've got just over 800 runners signed up at the moment and we're expecting there's always a last minute rush people leave things to the last minute while they can't decide if they're going to be injured or get a, a better offer um so you always get a bit of a surge in those last week or two but we, a, a group of us from our running club went down to the Great Ocean Road a couple of years ago, and they have a similar format where they have kind of more family-friendly runs on the Saturday, the longer runs on the Sunday, and a few other events around the runs. And they have something like seven and a half to 8,000 runners uh, over that weekend. So coming back to home, to down to McLarenville and the Fleurier Coast, you look around and it's an absolutely beautiful region. We're so lucky. McLarenville is obviously nationally recognized and world renowned so when people hear that there's a running event on it's like hmm, yeah that, that could that could be quite a nice destination to to run to so we've got our courses are going out through the vines with views down to the coast we've got the backdrop of the the southern mount lofty ranges so it's a, an absolutely beautiful event to run in but we've also looked to partner with local businesses and tourism where we can uh, just get just to encourage visitors to come to the region um, and really experience it we deliberately chose around the, this autumn time because summer's summer's over, so there's a bit more occupant uh, or a bit lower occupancy in some of the beds and restaurants. So we're hoping to bring people in who might want to come and stay for a longer weekend. Uh, with the family friendly aspects of the event, it's it's not something that you just, you know, quite a lot of running events I do. I'm up at five, drive to the start line, do the run, have a chat afterwards, maybe buy a coffee, and then you're home that afternoon. So hopefully we're going to be encouraging people to come and visit the area. This year we've got over 50 uh, interstate runners. There's a, a runner from every state and ter- territory in the country, which is great. And also when you see the, the registrations rolling in, they're from, they're from every corner of the state. We've got people from Port Lincoln, Mount Gambia, Sejuna, you name it, they're, they're, they're coming. So That's so good. So, we're, yeah, we're really excited. Um as the city of Onkapringa have been supporting the the development that Roger spoke about down at Christie's Down, they've also really seen the value in in the events, and they're they're looking to 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 engage with the local community, the local business community, and just add that vibrancy to the area and and look at new and innovative ways that we can bring people into the into into our region. And also, one thing I found really interesting in doing a bit of research and finding out more about the marathon is that there's actually a kids-friendly race. Tell us more about that one. Absolutely. On the Saturday, we've got a. We, it kicks off with a six k, uh, and then there's a, th- a thirteen k at around lunchtime. Um, but then later in the afternoon, starting at three o'clock, we've got the City of Onkapringa Mile. Uh, it's not just for kids. 
it's really targeting to be a, a an inclusive event. So if you're older, you might have health issues, you might have a disability. Um, everyone can get involved. It's really about participation and inclusion. Um, it's not a timed event, but everyone will start on the same start line that the marathoners start on the following morning. They'll, they'll run part of the course, loop back into Leckenfield Wines, and then they'll finish under the same arch down the finish chute, and they'll get a medal just like they'll see mum and dad doing or, or oh. friends and families later in the weekend. Terrific. That's so good because obviously, you know, some, some marathons you just or some events you just have purely the marathon, you know, and then that, like you mentioned before, you just go home. But I love the fact there's so much different stuff and it caters for people of all different age groups, different demographics, different backgrounds. I think that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yep. The, the strap line is there's a run for everyone and there really is. Yeah. And now, Roger, we'll get obviously um, you've been involved in tennis coaching for a long period of time. We spoke about this before uh, off air. For those people that don't know, you've coached some of the biggest names, uh, Leighton Hewitt, um, Garrett Munfries, uh, Joe Wilfred Songer, the list goes on. Um, also, you're doing a bit of um, coaching in terms of consulting now. Explain more about that and, and how we can find out more about this. Yeah, I think, you know, generally, I mean, you know, to, to be a tennis coach at the very pointy end of the game, you, you need to you need to offer legitimate time to that. That's a business. And you need to offer that to, you, to your client, to your – so and I, and when I'm in, I'm all in. Uh, so, <laughs> so that's a 35, 40-week. Uh, gig. So now that I don't do that uh, because of those uh, restraints and wanting to be dad and be home more and and and, f and see that journey of my daughter, um, you know. So so now I, I consult to, to into the sporting space and uh, not necessarily just tennis, but just uh, holistically. And I've always done that, but now I offer that uh, facility a lot more. So my, my job's my job's really been about performance, getting you to be the best performer personally first, and then whatever it attaches you. So um, it's your personal performance versus a person. And once I've got that under control, then it's if it's tennis, it's tennis. If it's uh, you know if it's, if, if it's it's an Olympic um, aerialist. It's an Olympic aerialist, which I'm currently helping at the moment. So, and the list goes on. So, or if it's someone who owns their business, you know, a, a global business, um, to a to a local business that that has two two people that work for them. So, so from the end of the day, it's all about personal performance first, um, and that's what I've really identified a long time ago. That the best version of you allows you to deliver on that day the best product. Um, we don't always get the best version of us on that day, uh, but when I say the ultimate version, but what we're looking for is just the best version on that day, and how can we for, how can we make that uh, better more often? And that's that's really what my platform's been about. So so I do that now uh, on a greater scale because I've got to, got that time to actually uh, deliver that deliver that more. So it's just through my website rogerashley.com, and um, yeah, and it's, it's a I love I've always loved the platform of performance and and personal performance. So so now I get to help in different you know in different ranges, which is great. And you're one of the lucky ones that got to go to the Australian Open this year as, as a commentator, and, and you were actually there when there was no crowds. Uh, what was it actually like and what was the feeling? Because it was quite eerie watching it on television. Yeah, it was great. I mean, great to get World Sport up um, and well done to, you know, for Tennis Australia to, to deliver that for the players from, you know, from the whole playing group to actually and, and the administration to actually sit there and actually go through what they had to do to deliver it. Uh, not easy, uh, regardless of... You know where you are on the uh, on the pecking order. It's just not easy uh, to to sit there and do that. But you know they they want to put the show on, and they were very committed to it from the players from Tennis Australia's point of view. And uh, so hats off to them and and to the to the state to the state government as well for the Victorian state government and, and health for doing the right thing. As a commentator, to to be able to commentate there it was it was interesting. Yeah, because the the energy what normally surrounds an Australian Open or a major event or Olympic Games or whatever whatever it may be, an AFL Grand Final, is the energy of the audience. And they bring the, you know, or a New York Marathon, uh, marathon the energy of the, the room, and that's the crowd. And they then all of a sudden they take you for the ride. So they, they create the experience. Um, and so do the players, but they add the the wow to the experience. And um, so we, you know, so that was what we missed. Um, through the commentary, we obviously had to give the same, and and you could do that because once you were there, you were locked into the game as a as a you know you're watching the game, but you miss the wow of when there was an outstanding bit of play, there would be the the oohs and ahs and the roar of a crowd where it was that, <laughs> and and and, you know, and, the, and the eerie feeling of walking through the streets of Melbourne where you didn't actually have to look to see if there was a car that crossed the road. You just walked. <laughs> and that is weird. You know, so it's like one of those movies that you see Manhattan in New York where the world's just stopped and you're the you and two people plus a dog is still alive and you go, right, we're walking through that. You know, so basically it was the same thing. So 
Yeah, it was it was quite strange. It was quite mentally quite exhausting because I can you can see how mentally there are people that don't cope in that space because it's so different that um, you know that's where the mental health kicks in. Is that how do I cope in this space because it's not my norm and it's quite eerie to to deal with dead time if you know what I mean. Yeah, so it was quite interesting. Yeah, thankfully, obviously, only it was for a few days, and then uh, we we got to have a crowd for the final. That was the most yeah, important that, thing. Wasn't yeah, it? that was so, good. And then I came yeah. here and stayed here for seven days at home, where I couldn't get out uh, <laughs> until until the border came down. So that was like, oh, and you know, and, and again, you know, every, and so that was quite strange as well. So after a couple of days, of thinking, okay, I've done enough laps of the pool, and I've been in the gym for 30, 35 hours, and, <laughs> and uh, I've done enough work in my office. So what next? <laughs> that's actually interesting to hear that because not all of us um, get to actually have that seven day quarantine experience so thanks for sharing well that. <laughs> I, I was hoping it was less but we had to wait till, till the borders came down so I'm you know at the moment I've got a couple of athletes that are doing 14 days a day five from coming from Europe uh, oh. that are sitting so um, I work with them daily to actually sort of you know to plan actually staying through you know it's a hard time it's a hard gig yeah you know just sitting in that in that one space it's not yeah whether whether it's, whether an athlete or anyone else it's just a hard space to be in it's solitary confinement yeah and a that, lot of netflix i guess yeah but there's only <laughs> it's still just yeah it's yeah it's a tough gig i think that's 36 hours we had in uh november was uh, bad enough that you can go and walk the dog? <laughs> yeah. I, was, <laughs> I, was, I was laughing in the dining room that day. Yeah. Makes you appreciate like how tough Melbourne, you know, when they had it, what, for six months or something with a, yeah. pretty mm. much a lockdown was, and to think they just went through that and we just had three days, it's mm. just amazing, isn't yeah, it, when exactly. you compare? So, Lucky. Yeah. Well, Matt Evans uh, and Roger Rashid, thanks so much for joining us today on Legends with Bebo. Really looking forward to this uh, Leakenfield Wines Mar- McLaren Vale Marathon. It's a bit of a mouthful. We got there in the end. Uh, it's going to be a ripper, obviously, sponsored by Roger Rashid, Roger Rashid Sports Foundation. Um, guys, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks. Pleasure. pleasure. Thank you for having Good us. Good luck, Matt. Thanks, Roger. See you down there.